right. Everything else they can get on the new teacher. Hi. So uh, I want to first thank all of y'all for being here this uh, evening. I know that it is spring break. <laughs> Most of you want to stay away from the kids on the beach, so let's walk into the city. So let me introduce myself and our candidates that are here today. I'm Justice Gina Benavides. I am one of your justices on the 13th Court of Appeals, uh, and I have been one of your judges for 18 years. So you have elected me three times to this position. Uh, with me is Justice Nora Longoria. She is my colleague on the Court of Appeals. She has been there 12 years. She's finishing up her second term, so you have elected her twice to the, to the Court of Appeals. And then we have two new candidates to present to you today. We have Joe Martinez uh, running for place four, and then Reggie Richardson running for place five. And I'm gonna start this a little bit uh, by telling you about the Court of Appeals, because until you fully understand, you're probably sitting there going, why are there four judges running for one court? And so uh, I'm going to start off by explaining the 13th Court of Appeals and why there are four candidates here in front of you today. So the 13th Court of Appeals, and I hand it a map because I always think the map works better. It's an appellate court, so it is a court of jurisdiction over your trial judges. So we review the decisions of all the trial judges, including your trial judge here in Calgary County. And it covers, uh, it covers 20 counties. I was gonna say 17, I don't know why. 20 counties, so it's right here. The state of Texas is divided in 14, actually 15 now, but 14 geographical courts. And so the 13th court starts all the way down here in the Rio Grande Valley, and then comes up the coast through Kingsville, hits Corpus Christi, and still runs all the way in the water, all the way to Calhoun, which is where we are, Matagor and Martin. Martin is our northernmost county. It's where the Buckeyes is. Usually that's what I tell people in South Texas because they all know where the Buckeyes is in Martin. <laughs> and then if you head towards San Antonio, we do have some of 37, all the way up to Live Oak. So we have George West and Live Oak County. So we have Three Rivers in George West, which means we have Victoria and Beeville in all of those areas. So it's a huge geographical area. And the 13th Court of Appeals has six judges that sit on it. So we are six judges. The chief, then place two, three, four, five, and six. They're just numbers. And in this election cycle, four of those seats are open, including the chief, seat two, seat four, and seat five. It's just the way the legislature created the Court of Appeals. It was created in, if you want a historical, I can give you the whole historical, but not necessary. We just exist now. Um, so what has happened in this election cycle, and we are elected every six years. So because we are multi-county, we are elected six years, not four years. So what has occurred this year, in 2018, you elected uh, Dory Contreras, Chief Dory Contreras, to this court. She has now decided to retire. She's been on the court 22 years. So she is retiring. So as the chief, and the only difference between the chief and all the others is that the chief also covers the administration portion of the court all the hiring and firing of the multi and the budget and the money and all that stuff and she's done a great job your court of appeals has been in the best position financially it's ever been a lot of it due to chief door but she is retiring so uh she looked at me as a senior justice because i am now the senior judge which is i'm the judge that's been there the longest and said my seat was up which is place five so instead of running for my seat, I decided to run for the chief's seat, all right? So I am now running for the chief of the 13th Court of Appeals. Now my shirts still say real ed because we are, we are scrimping every penny, right? Because <laughs> these t-shirts cost money and I still had them from six years ago. Uh, and so we are still wearing them until I'm down to a smattering, but please state what's there. I'm gonna leave them with Brandy, along with some koozies and some pencils. So feel free to grab them, take them, and hand them out. T-shirts are like the best advertisement you can have. And I try to wear mine. I got my grandkids all on, my husband's on, we all have them, and we're gonna get you ones that say, elect Gina Benavides uh, for Chief Justice. We can just black out the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> you can 
do whatever. You know what? All that's important is Gina Benavides, right? <laughs> Uh, so that, that's what happened, uh, why I'm running for chief. Uh, Nora, we'll talk a little bit, but she is running for her position, which is place two. She is running for re-election. Um, so that opened up my seat, right? Because place five is now open. It was up for, for, for to be filled. So Reggie, right over here, is running for place five. All right? She'll talk to you a little bit about her and her credentials. Reggie's story is great because one of the reasons I ran for the court 18 years is for this wonderful woman right here, Justice Linda Yamas, who served on our court. Uh, and I don't remember what year you started. <laughs> 1993. Okay, 1993. I, can I say 1993, Governor Ann Richards appointed me the first woman on the court. First woman. And the first Latina in the state of Texas. So this is the yes. groundbreaker right yes. here. and so oh. now my daughter. So, and my other daughter is a, on the court of the first court of appeals in Houston. So this is a legacy run for us. So we are super excited. I mean, I know Reggie since like before she was a lawyer. <laughs> so it is. It just gives me goosebumps to think about it, right? Because here we are making and advancing and doing historical investment. But that's not to take away from Joe's position, Martinez. So that's place four. And currently sitting there is a man whose name I want you to forget as soon as I say it, Jaime Tejerina, who is a Republican and who is running for chief against me. So by him by running opened up his seat. And Joe Martinez, who's an old dear friend of mine uh, from the Rio Grande Valley, is seeking place four. So we are all running as your Democratic candidates for the 13th Court of Appeals. It's really important because people start thinking we're running against each other. We are not. This is your slate for the 13th Court of Appeals. And it is an amazing slate. Uh, more qualified than the slate on the Republican, there are four Republicans running. So we are definitely, by years and by experience, I can say with all sincerity, these four uh, candidates out educate them, out smart them, out experience them, and are gonna out campaign them so we win on November 6th. All right? Mm -hmm. so, let me just tell you a little bit about my, myself and then I'm gonna let the rest of the candidates talk, but I do also want to talk about numbers real quick. Um, I'm originally born in Laredo, raised in Corpus Christi. Um, I am familiar with Fort Lavaca because I did mock trials and debates, and we would compete with Fort Lock High School. So I am familiar with this area. Come on in! <laughs> We're just getting to know each other. So uh, I went to Carroll High School, graduated in 1981, then went to UT uh, up in Austin, so I'm a hook of Longhorn. And then I went to the University of Houston Law School. Uh, and then when I graduated from law school, I joined a law firm in Harbingen, Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley, doing defense work for 12 years. And then I partnered up with my old college friend from UT and had our firm for another seven years. So I practiced law for 20 years doing litigation, which means I was in the courtroom every year, every day, all the time, including here in Calhoun County. <laughs> so I was very familiar. Uh, with litigation, uh, 34 jury verdicts in my pocket by the time I took uh, the court. I became uh, a judge, uh, you elected me in 2006. I took the bench in January 1st of 2007. And in the 18 years I've been on the court, I have written close to 2,000 opinions. So the difference with appellate courts is that we write opinions. We sit down and review the record and do an analysis of all the court rulings in all 20 of our counties. And so that's what we do. We write opinions. We make the law. And as we have gone through, you're like, why is that important? Most people care about their judge down the street, right? But why are we important? Why is the appellate court important to you and to the voters of Calhoun? Because we make the law. We are the ones who decide. Because as you've heard, We've got a former president that likes to be, you know, in the news with legal problems. And where is this fight going to end up at? 
the appellate court. Because that's ultimately who's going to make these decisions. And when you have a governor and a lieutenant governor who are constantly fighting things in the court, the ones that are ultimately making the decisions are your appellate courts. We are ultimately the ones that make the law. It's really easy for those trial judges, but we have to make sure that their decisions stick based on the Constitution and the law before you. So this court is super important. Super important because until very recently, it was an all Democrat court. And through the last couple of years, unfortunately, we have slowly lost so that we are now three Democrats and three Republicans. And if your candidates here before you don't win on November 6th, it will become an all Republican court which is devastating to the state of Texas and to the law. And I truly mean that. I've worked with them. I know how they think. I know how they rule. And it is devastating to the issues that are important to us as people. Because I don't think it matters who you are. As people, it is important that we continue to have our rights. So I'm here to ask you all to work harder than you've ever worked before for the next seven months. We are working, as you can see, we're all here. We will always be here. Oscar will vouch that I am everywhere at all times. <laughs> My husband is with me, the grandkids are with me, uh, the siblings are with me, the, and because we, the primary has showed us that the numbers are down for the Democrats. And we can't be down. If anything, we have to be higher than we were six years ago when we won this court, and we are there. And that just means we somehow, and if anybody can answer this question, because <laughs> that's how my phone was blowing up on the, you know, the day after the primary. How do we get people to the ballot box? That's all, they're here. We know they're here. For example, of all the Democrats that voted in, in Calhoun, it was approximately about 200. Uh, in the Democratic primary, 110 voted for me because I was checking the numbers on the drive up to this. That means that 80 Democrats who voted still didn't vote for me. We can't have that. We can't have the undervote. We need every Democrat to vote for every candidate, and we need every Democrat in Calhoun to vote. We had uh, in in six years ago, six years ago, close to 500 Democrats vote. In Calhoun County, in the, in in the Chiefs, I just checked the Chiefs, Chief to Chief, six years ago, close to five hundred. We had two hundred. We needed all. We need all five hundred votes if we're going to make the difference. Look, we know we're not going to we're not going to win Calhoun County. <laughs> we understand that, but we have to keep the numbers tight enough that the rest of the area, like Hidalgo and Cameron, can make up the difference which is where voters are. But we have to close the numbers. We can't separate the numbers. We have to make that number. So we are gonna ask y'all to walk, to put up signs, to knock on doors, uh, every person you meet. And I know it's hard to be a Democrat in Calhoun County. <laughs> but I think, I think that we should own it. I'm not, I mean, we were in Cueto, and people are whispering in our ears. Nora, Nora and I were in Quinto. We're like, what are the Democrats? I mean, they, they were they were afraid to say it out loud because they get bullied, right? We're afraid. We're done. I'm done. I was yelling it at lunch today. My sister's like, be quiet. You don't know who's in the restaurant. I don't care. I'm a Democrat. It's important that we say it out loud. So let's all say it together. We are Democrats. We are Democrats. And we say it to everybody we meet, and we defend it every single day. I'm done. I'm done trying to be nice. <laughs> so we're going to ask you to do the same. We're doing it every day, all day long, and we're going to ask you to do the same. So I'm going to let the other three candidates, and we're here, and to talk to you and for whatever you need. So I'm going to let Justice North, because she's the next senior judge on your court, tell you about her and what we need from y'all. Hi, everybody. Um, I echo everything uh, Justice Gina just said. Uh, my name is Laura Lagoria. I recognize many of you uh, as 
Gina said, I've been on the court for 12 years. Uh, I've written about 1,200 opinions, and uh, our court is in danger of being overtaken by Republicans. Uh, right now, uh, as Gina said, we're 50-50, and we've just seen a shift in the way our atmosphere is at the court, the way our opinions are coming down. Uh, you know, we want to make sure, just like we've seen at the Supreme Court level, I mean, I think our courts are in focus. We've lost, you know, women's reproductive rights, we've lost all kinds of rights. And these are the kind of rights that will disappear more and more if we do not have a democratic court for our 20 counties. It's extremely important. Um, I can say that the people on our, we are so lucky to have two new candidates and they're both very qualified. I'm very proud and excited about both of them. I'm gonna tell you about them a little bit more in a minute. Uh, our slate of candidates is completely qualified. I mean, we are so much more qualified. Gina is running against a, uh, a person on our court who's been there for like four years. Gina's been there, you know, 18 years and she's, one, she's fantastic. She's gonna make a great chief and we just have to get her there. Uh, my opponent has no judicial experience. Uh, I have, you know, I guess I've been practicing law now 34 years. She's probably been practicing about 20. She's never been a judge. So I can honestly say there's no comparison in that. The reason I'm saying this is not, I know you guys are my people, you're gonna vote for me, but the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to be able to tell people in your community, guess what, you know, it's just not because she's a Democrat, it's because she's the best qualified person to be on the court. And we have to reach out to those people. I know that sometimes the lines are drawn in the sand, but if we don't get other people besides our core people to vote for us, it's not going to work. I pulled up a few numbers too, and um, you know, so I, I know uh, Raylan told me that of course there was a lot of contested Republican races, so a lot of people in this county voted in the Republican primary instead of the Democratic primary. So maybe that's why the numbers are so different because uh, for my for my seat, I got like 200 votes, and the same in the same year in 2020, same candidate, same. Trump and Biden, the person that ran for a seat on our court got 800 votes, a Democrat. So the Democrats lost 600 votes in the primary between 2020 and 2024. Granted, hopefully a lot of it's because of those contested races, <laughs> but we, you know, we've got some work to do, uh, but this, this, this group is energetic. These four people here are here for you and we're, we're willing to do whatever. Don't think, oh, they don't want to come to Lavaca County, please. Uh, we, there, we have information on our cards for our website, our email. Please send us an email, we will come. And if there are things that are uh, like not, not Democratic or Republican per se, like festivals or you know, parades, uh, city events, those are the kind of events we'll be happy to come to and talk to people and maybe change a few minds or maybe get some of the Democrats that are too excited after the vote. We've got to do something. You know, the three big counties are Hidalgo, uh, Cameron and Wessex. Wessex, we used to be able to split half and half. Now it's probably about, I don't know, it's, it's itching up, more Republican. We still win Cameron, but it's not the spread we used to be. You know, and in, in Hidalgo, it's 60-40, 60% 40, Democratic, 40% Republican. But we used to have 65-35. So they're kind of creeping in on us, and the margins, as Gina said, are just narrowing on us. It's still doable. You know, we're the last survivors, Gina and I, uh, for 2018. Beto, I think, helped us to win because he got the vote out, so we made it. So then, you know, after that, 2020 came, we lost we lost two places in our court. 22, 22, 22 came and we lost another place. So that's why we're 3-3. Three, three. So this is vital. Uh, we've got the candidates. We've got the time. We are going to work hard. We're going to do everything we can. We'll be everywhere, but we need your help. Especially with those those events, you know, with church event, the church festival, school festival. We, who knows when we can make it? We can probably make it. We will, because that's what it's going to take. And you know, it's going to take all of us being a little courageous and, like Gina said, owning it, being proud of who we are and what we stand for. We stand for kindness and values and all the things that the other side proclaims to be about. And it's just imperative that we stand up for each other. Uh, so please. If, you, if, you, if there's any event, it's not too small, not to call us. And, and uh, if, we, if one of us can't make it, maybe you know, a combination of, of, of one of the four of us can, can make it to get the word out because it's going to be extremely important. But uh, I want to thank everybody here because I recognize many of you because you all are the ones. You're our core, and I know it's not easy. And thank you for all the hard work. And we're just going to ask you to work 
very, very hard the next few months. Anyway. Thank you. Well, hello everybody. Um, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I've, I've been looking forward to venturing out into our, our district, uh, which is 20 counties, and, and the way that this district is drawn, I'm sure uh, all of us uh, know what the, what the undertone is, and uh, we just have to respond uh, in a way that we let people know that we are involved and we are gonna come out and vote. As for myself, I am now a 20-year uh, practicing uh, lawyer, and I practice primarily in Yaga County. That is where my office is. I practice in Cameron County as well, and I grew up in Cameron County. I grew up uh, mostly on the border. Uh, that is, I can report to you, is not being ravaged by anybody. Uh, we are living well. We are living in peace. Uh, the winter Texans are still enjoying our weather and they're enjoying the other side of the border uh, without any issues. And that is just giving you my, my background as to where I come from. So my mind is broad and open. And I, I, I do ask that even when you're speaking to people you know are conservative uh, leaning and you can still have uh, a civil conversation, uh, with things being so heated right now is that it does matter who your judges are. And I think the last few years have told us that uh, more than, than ever. And so who's on the court is more in the dialogue and in the conversation. And so what I say to that, and I've been approached by folks who try to commit me to, to answers to questions about whether I'm trying to take your guns, or do I think that uh, cells in a room are people, uh, things like that. And, and the clarification that I make is that we are not running to legislate. That is left to state representatives, senators, and, and those people that are in charge of doing that. Now, what we do is we apply the law and interpret it, and wherever there is room, I have no problem telling conservatives, wherever there is room, understand that we are the more open party. We are the inclusive party. When you are not trying to limit people's lives, then by definition, you are more open. And you are trying to include everyone who's in a society so that everyone can live a more peaceful and enjoyable life alongside each other. And that is where I come from. Uh, my family is a family of lawyers and educators, lawyers and teachers uh, mostly. And so that combination makes for uh, almost a guaranteed open mind and a liberal approach to life and inclusive of all people. I myself have my own practice. I, I hung my shingle about 19 years ago. And I can tell you that my qualifications are that I have been in the courtroom since I started. And so my DNA is in the paint in the walls of the courthouse. So when I go in to have deliberations with the great Justice Dina, who will be our chief, <laughs> uh, and, and Justice Nora, and whoever's at that deliberation table, I'm bringing in that experience of having been in front of a lot of juries in criminal cases and family cases, and those are tough. And I know what it is in that courtroom, face-to-face, -face, live. And I will be taking that into the deliberation room of the Court of Appeal. And I look forward to doing that and to doing that on behalf of everyone, everyone, and I mean everyone because the Constitution applies to everyone. It doesn't say citizen, it says person. And that is what we will be charged with doing. I was raised that way, uh, and I have continued that, and I plan to continue that. And, and what we need is, what Judge, uh, Judge Gina said, is we need everyone to be really committed to this effort. Because if we are not, then I guess we're showing that democracy doesn't work. It only works when people are actually voting. 
and it is not working when people don't. And we have to remind our friends, our colleagues, our family members that it is our responsibility to vote. And when we do, we're at least participating at a level that we were meant to from the very beginning. And so I, I ask and I implore you to please uh, actively approach people to participate and to vote. And remember, when we go vote this November, we no longer have graduated voting. Everyone has to go race by race and not to sort of skip over the judicial uh, elections. That, that happens a lot. Uh, but I think now uh, we can make a case that judges are elected and we need to elect the right ones. And I can tell you that the group that I am running with, I am so proud uh, and coming from uh, my mother's legacy, my sister's now serving in Houston, uh, that, is what, that is what we do and that is what I intend to do, that is what we all intend to do. And um, I, I just ask that we get serious, we've been on the, on the defensive, we're constantly responding to this you know, crazy dialogue that they try to engage us in and it's been working. And as I've thought about it since the State of the Union, where President Biden did an incredible job of telling us what this country is really about. That was so resounding to me and it echoes in my mind about what this country is about. He is what this country is about. I too am a grieving parent, I understand. And the fact that that man is a double grieving parent is just unbelievable to me and he continues to serve, and he continues to serve his country in a way that is outside himself. And that is what this party is truly, truly about. And I think that Gina is right, Justice Gina is right, that no more, we can't try to be apologetic and tippy toe around this stuff. We have to be true to what we are, and that is inclusive, and that is having conversation. You don't have to agree on everything to be united. United means you allow people to have discussions. And we have to now, in my opinion, we have to now come forward. And we have to now not be answering to them, but we need to be pushing what we know is right and not try to defend ourselves against what we're hearing. Because that's mm -hmm. become noise. And the hashtag that is catching on for you know people that are online is, it's time to get serious. And it is, it's time to get serious. And whatever that noise is over there, the adults in the room are ready to get things done. And that's what we need to do. And I'm asking you, that are here, you guys are, are literally at the core of how this is gonna happen. Because you all are here during spring break. You know what I mean? You're, you're here and you're listening and I can see that you're listening attentively and it's giving me chills because this is exactly what makes things happen, is the fact that we're here. And I can feel your energy and I promise you I'm giving it back to you. And I echo what Justice Gina, what Justice Mora said in, the, in that, if there's anything going on over here, uh, I would be happy to come, we'd all be happy to come whenever we can. And if anybody has any questions and wants to uh, have a conversation, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to talk to folks and, and, and have a real conversation. Because conservatives, wherever you are on that spectrum, what matters is who's sitting on those benches because you have a better shot at being heard and being heard fairly by those of us who are on this side of the spectrum. It works better for everyone on the spectrum. And that's what matters and it should matter and remind people, conservative or not, that that is what matters. Independents, conservatives, liberals, super liberals, super conservatives. We want people like us on the bench. And I promise I will work 
so hard just as I've been for the last 20 years. It's what I was taught to do, and I will continue to do that. And I look forward to talking to every one of you. And I, I'm super, I'm super stoked and super excited about moving forward in this campaign. And Lisa, I thank you so much for keeping me in the loop uh, of everything. It just means so much to me. And I'm feeling the, not just the energy, but I'm feeling the love in this room, and I thank you all for it. And I give it back to you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Martinez, born and raised in McAllen. I do have a relative that used to live in Port Lavaca. Her name was Mildred Rendon. But if she was still alive today, she'd be about 100. <laughs> <laughs> my poor Aunt Mildred, uh, she married my uncle, Romeo Saldana, when she was about 19, and she left Port Lavaca. He was in the Army. They went to Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio and made their lives in San Antonio. But I used to ask my Aunt Mildred, uh, where are you from, Tia Mildred? Port Lavaca? Oh yeah, what's the name of the high school team? Sand Crabs. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest thing. You know, the Sand Crabs, okay. so I'm, I've never been to Port Lavaca. I've never been to the home of the sand crabs. I'm really glad to finally be here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now let's go sand crabs. Okay. As my colleagues have told you, uh, they're so intelligent, they're so well spoken. There's really nothing else that I can say except that we need to keep Democrats in office in Texas. We're almost completely wiped out. South Texas is one of our last strongholds. We need to keep it that way. And we believe in justice and fair and impartial decision-making. Uh, we want to follow the law, follow the Constitution. We can't politic like a state representative or a state senator to say we're for this issue or we're against this issue. But we promise to give you fair and impartial justice coming from Democrats. The Calhoun County Democratic Party uh, flyer here has a little page that says, we believe, we believe in the same things, supporting families, providing education, healthcare, and jobs that pay a living wage. If Democrats like LBJ hadn't provided education for us, an educational opportunity, things that Republicans consider bad words like affirmative action, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have gone to UT undergrad, and I have a lot of Aggie friends too. Uh, I wouldn't have gone to Georgetown Law School. I wouldn't have finished up at UT Law School. Back in the days that I went to law school, farm worker rights were very important in the Rio Grande Valley, and I wanted to come back to the valley and work with Texas Rural Legal Aid to help farm workers. McAllen at that time had a very autocratic, despotic mayor by the name of Ophel Brand, who's another Donald Trump. Uh, back in the day, he was a big grower. Uh, he did not want the farm workers to organize. He did not want farm workers uh, to have restrooms in the fields or adequate wa water. If the farm workers, organizers would go down to the valley and uh, try to organize at his onion fields, he would come out there with a pistol and shoot up in the air, get the hell out of here because the next shot's coming for you. So I was up at Georgetown Law School in Washington, D.C., and just finishing up my first year. And I said, you know, I told my buddies at my study group, I said, I want to go back to Texas. Oh, no. Don't go back to Texas. Don't go bang your head against local politicians. Stay here in DC, affect national policy. I said, no, nah, that's too abstract for me. Uh, it's too much BS. I want to go back and go to my community and work for my grassroots. So that was 45 years ago. Uh, I've had a long career, 42 years. Uh, I have a beautiful wife, three beautiful kids, five beautiful grandkids, 
my time to give back, my time to give back to the community. And I would love to give back to Calhoun County and to the 13th Judicial District of Texas as a justice for place four. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you being out here. Uh, even though I'm just a driver for these three. <laughs> He's a good driver. They, they recruited me because I needed a driver. <laughs> we like this truck. He's got a great truck. So anyway, folks, Joe Martinez, thank you very much. I love you all. Let's go. anybody has any questions uh, generally specifically uh, everything's on the table uh, no yes this is a nice one um, with the new court that has been instituted those justices are all going to be we already have an appointed right correct so what okay. is, what what so is that then going to split your decisions between the criminal court, the appeals, or the, the Supreme Court, the criminal court of appeals, and the state court? No, no. So what happens is Paxton doesn't like the third court of appeals, which is the court of appeals that sits in Austin, right? Because they're Democrats in Austin. Austin is still a hardcore blue in the middle. Most of your big cities are. Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, and it's growing out. So as they're growing out, unfortunately, the rural areas are, you know, like the valley is, is, is growing in the opposite direction, but we can have a whole a different discussion. So Paxton didn't like the third court of appeals, so Paxton does what Paxton does. He created his own court of appeals. It's called the 15th court of appeals, and it has a jurisdiction of all attorney general type of cases. And so instead of going to the third court of appeals or to certain cases that exist in our area that affect the Attorney General's office that would normally come to the 13th. It now goes to this Court of Appeals of which they are court appointed uh, and uh, get They're at the pleasure of the governor. They're at the pleasure of the governor yes. every two years. So basically if the governor doesn't like what you're doing, he's just going to take you off and put somebody else or tax them, whoever mm -hmm. it is. So, you know, we talk a lot about judicial independence, right? And, and what's important. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the opinions that I have written in the last two years, you know, in the last 18 years, you would have agreed with all 2,000 of them. I, there are opinions that I have to sign sometimes that I don't agree with philosophically. You have to remember we lived in a state where uh, 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 reproductive rights are limited, and sometimes that's the law is the way it was written. Uh, we lived in a state where uh, same-sex marriages was illegal. Uh, we lived in the in a state uh, of the death penalty, even though we don't hear any death penalty cases. It's the only federal case we don't hear. But we are in the. I think that what is different from us, and I do, and I truly believe this, is that we don't have another agenda, right? We are here to uphold the law, and I mean that in all sincerity. Uh, whether we like it or not, it is what is before us. While I truly believe that our cohorts have an underlying agenda, they're there at the beck and call of a governor, of attorney general, and the Republican Party. So the Court of Criminal Appeals, for example, recently in this election, uh, which is the highest court on the criminals, did not like what they did to Paxson in his criminal indictments because they won't dismiss them, right? So he put three candidates up against the three Republicans and he defeated them. So he now has three judges at the Court of Criminal Appeals that are in his bank and call. That is not judicial independence. And so that's the problem that we have with the 15th Court of Appeals, with our Court of Appeals, because they have basically sign their judicial opinion. And we see that at the U.S. Supreme Court. They sign their, their, I don't care what they attested to in front of Congress, they signed off on what they believe is the right, not what the Constitution says is right. And that's the problem. And I, I did, if I can, Go ahead. I want to say something about, about voting, right, and, and coming out, just because the turnout is, is lower than we could have ever expected. Um, but at least we know now what we need to do 
in November. Um, and what happened is I, I also serve as a, as a mediator in a lot of cases. And, and what I tell parties uh, on both sides is, look, you're in, a, you're in a situation right now where you can decide your date. You can make that decision right now if we can just come together and figure this out. Uh, let me help you do that kind of thing. The same thing goes with voting. If you don't vote, then you're leaving it in the hands of the people that did. And you're putting your faith and the people around you, their faith, in the hands of the few that voted. And that should be a pretty scary, offensive proposition. Because the whole point of voting <coughs> is that we're deciding. Yeah. We're deciding. And public service has been taken out of the mouth of public service. And they, they don't understand that that is what we are all doing and vying to do. We're being paid with public money, which is everybody's money, to do that job, whatever it is that we're elected to do. So I have coaches that I'm applying for this job to be hired by the people in the district. And it's very important, I think, to, to understand it in that way and explain it to other people that may not want to vote, that, okay, well, then you're going to leave it in the hands of the few that will vote, instead of you deciding your fate for yourself. I think what happened to some of your numbers, from some of my Democratic friends that I've talked to, is they chose to vote Republican in the primary because we have some hotly contested local that are only on the Republican. Republican I, I fully understand that. Yeah. Yeah. That happened in New Orleans County. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, because on our Democratic side, those folks weren't there to be voting right. with Republicans that were running. And so that took those folks away. I don't know how many. I don't for sure do. <laughs> 600. <laughs> uh, 600. Hopefully, yeah, 600. But that's and hopefully, that's the that's trick true. is to get those 600 back to us. Yeah. Right now, we have to make sure we get those 600 plus back to us and voting on the Democratic tickets. So the candidates are there. You know, uh, you know, Nora talks about her, her candidate's gonna say she has an appellate experience. She has none. I know that for a fact. She's gonna say, well, I worked at the county and they, yeah, she worked at the county and the county had appellate, but she's never argued in front of a court. She's never been a judge. So they're gonna make arguments that they're better qualified and we need to make sure that we tell them. But I agree with you. I, I, my, the two lawyers that worked for me came and told me, we're gonna vote in the Republican primary because they wanted to vote against people. <laughs> and I fully, but I know they're gonna vote for me, right? There's two more votes, right? <laughs> we're at four. <laughs> so, you know, but we gotta make sure they go out and vote in the Democrat and that we didn't lose them. Uh, and I agree that, uh, I, I, Granny, I'm happy to hear that you're doing bailouts because I really do. Uh, we were taught in campaign school that every, everybody needs three touches. To get someone to really go out and vote for you, you have to touch them three times. Telephone, in person, a mail out. I know that we get tired of seeing those mails. I mean, my, my mailbox was full the last <laughs> two weeks of campaign stuff. But I know that what's sticking with me is the ones that I saw for. The sign I saw more. Repetitious. Repetitious. I know everybody hates the signs on the street, but we know that the signs work, right? So I brought some signs. We're going to have more signs. We're going to get signs. You're not going to have to pay for our signs. We're going to bring them to you, Brandy. But I need y'all to put them up. In good locations. In good locations, right? We need them up. And so that when people go on November 6th, they'll say, I saw Justin Norland or his beautiful face. On that, <laughs> on that, on that poster, and uh, and I remember Joe's truck with his, you know, banner on the side, and and that's how we do it. So. And let me say that that Justice Gina, who's going to be our chief, um, she was the rallying cry as to why I'm running and why Joe's running, and she has sacrificed herself by jumping out of her place to run for chief. And that's super important, I think, and we need to go out and tell people that. We're people of action, and we really are putting everything in. And I'm, I'm pulling myself out of my practice uh, to run for the first time ever in 20 counties 
with the practice that I have. But they, my, my opponent has already talked about my lack of a color scheme. And I really can't wait to talk to him in person. Because, <laughs> because the reality of it is, and again, he knows that, but it's time to get serious. What matters is lawyers who have been out in the field and looking at jurors in person and looking at judges and, and getting transcripts of records and holding the courts to task because how else are you gonna know how to evaluate the case that's on appeal? Unless you're actually there. And I'm actually there four to five days a week. I really am. I'm there every day. I know every corner of that building in my county and also in Canada. And so you can also use that as a, as a talking point if the other side is going around saying, well, you don't have any appellate experience. Maybe, maybe can to you. Because that those are not the two different lines. Appellate lawyers generally are paid, what we call paper lawyers, desk lawyers. That's what they do and that's great and that's their specialty and, and running for office is not for everybody. But the ones that do are the ones that are out there in the field actually practicing it. It's what uh, Gina did it before, it's what, I mean, Judge Gina, Judge Nora, Joe, myself. It, that's, what it, that's what you want. You want the people that are not afraid to look at you know, jurors and judges and opposing counsel in the face. So that matters that we are practicing lawyers so when you hear, well, they don't have any experience in the appellate world. Right, because we did this in lawyering. That's what we do. And we're taking that to the next level to the deliberation table. And frankly, it's gonna be difficult for me, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all of you need to log down the day. That's 12 of the morning. It's on my calendar. <laughs> okay. Barbacoa is a big word on the island. Oh, y'all did that here? Awesome, we did the Navajo with Barbacoa, did that. We did it two years ago. It, Oscar didn't know what he was doing. He just said, I wanna do it, and so we did. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the room with Texas when there was a big red. Uh, I think we're all getting older too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I think we really need to do and really think about, guys, is I don't know how we do this, and I've seen it in a bunch of the counties. We need to get the younger Democrats out. Can there are, something uh, about uh, Yes. <laughs> you right there. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, <laughs> this, I've, I've been here. I've never been here twice. No more first time. But that's beside the point. What I want to know is why the Democrat Party has no candidates in this primary. They already know the answer. But I want to bring it out publicly. You know what? It we need people that know how to groom other people into being candidates. Because the people are becoming extinct. And I think if there's any junior colleges, I mean, it's, no. it's, it's, let me, let me tell you, it is, it, is, it is hard to run a campaign. It's hard to buy Fox News. It, 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 it is, it is, Every time I walk into a restaurant and Fox News is on, I say, yeah. please change the channel. Right. I mean, that's what I do. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm your customer. I, I'm, put the discovery, put, put the discovery channel on. If they won't, I, I'll walk out. I mean, it's as easy as that. I'm not going to walk in and, and listen to this, yeah. too. But, but there are two things that occur. And I ran for the Texas Supreme Court knowing fully well that no one has won a statewide race. And I did it for that reason, because we need people yeah. on the ballot. Exactly. But it is hard to convince people to run when you sit and look at the numbers. And when we have no community. I mean, that's, I mean, we yeah. have community colleges, high schools. What can we do to bring out young know, vote? I mean, you know, it, there's nobody, I mean, there's probably two people here under, under 30. <laughs> I mean, I love you all, y'all are my people, I'm 60. I get it, but what do we do? Uh, do is there a community college here? Is, is there, yeah, Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. 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 Yeah, or stuff like that. Young Democrats, I don't know how or who we would get to start something like that, but we'd be willing to come and talk to you guys. Yeah. Or group is going to get together. I don't, I, you know. I think it's, I also think it's not understanding they know about governors and representatives, but right. they don't know about because oh, we're one of what two states that elect judges. Yes, uh, uh, in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh, to Oklahoma. And then we're that we're also the only ones that still elected as a DNR. Yeah. There's still a lot of states that elect their judges, but they're not. But they're not. But our, not, they're but our young folks don't no. understand that from from any kind of 
high school or college course they got, they don't understand the different types of courts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you sit all, you know, you, when you have folks who sit all day and just getting around mm -hmm. all day, all day, day and yeah. they're tired and they don't want to listen. Right. Mm -hmm. and and they're, they're, the other side is the loudest in the yeah. room, right? And they're not saying anything. Right. Uh, <laughs> substantively, just the loudest. And what I've, what I've, at least for me, what I've found is that kids, the, the best route to take is to go around them and, and not waste on trying to respond to them. And that's what we do. Well, and, and, and you want to and you want to know the history of how we got to where we are. I have a book for you to read. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. It's called The Kingdom, the Power and the Glory. Okay. And it's written by a preacher that teaches kids in Alberta. Oh yeah. And it yeah. takes you yeah. how all of this started. That's where the abortion issue came from. That's where the term stop and steal came from. <clears throat> That will give you a history of why we are where we are with the people who call themselves evangelicals and and the and the stuff that's yeah, washing all of us off right. the TV. So I, I I will dis I will disagree to a certain extent with Regina. I'll probably do this when we're both on the on the court. <laughs> this is why we're gonna be best friends. Just like we did. Just like we did all the time. Yeah. Uh, is is that I, we do have to go around though that there's just the, the sky's not blue and there's right. some like Front of my family. Yeah. but but someone said to me the other day well are you better off now than you were four years ago and the answer is yes, yes. right yes. i was like yes you are better off today than you were four years ago unemployment is down <laughs> we have more jobs that we can fill right no one's filling them. Your gas prices are down. My 401k bag looks much prettier now than it did four years ago. So, but 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 they have convinced these people that they're not better off four years now. Better off. I mean, that's the fallacy. That's Cattle there. prices are at record high right now. Just, 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 I, I, I love to argue with these rednecks. I know. I have right? cattle. <laughs> cattle hit record prices under Obama and under Biden. That's yeah. right. And Carter, you want to go back that yeah. far too? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she's, she, she's a cattle girl. So her dad is a cattle. <laughs> so yeah, I you know, I didn't know that. So I'm, I can add one more thing. Yes, and if you're a cattle rancher, you're. Cattle. I may pay more in the supermarket, but it's yeah. higher. It's it's the supermarket. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. also reached that, that's. Strictly, that's, that's strictly, I think, the, 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 the offshoot of COVID. Right. Yeah. And yeah. nothing else. And nothing else. Right. Sure. No. We've for also sure. reached energy yeah. independence. Yeah. For the first time since Carter, we do not depend on foreign nations for anything. And that's because we have, uh, we're drilling more than ever, but also wind and solar, solar is expanding like crazy. It is becoming cheap as crazy. And that is uh, pushing us forward. And we've also, there's, um, there, it, I think it was a CNBC guy who, who was on uh, Morning Joe about a few days ago or last week, and he had like five charts and he compared how we were to where we are now. And in every graph, we were doing way better. Way better. So yeah, I think that was crazy, you can say, yeah, it's going to be better. Crazy better. <laughs> we're crazy better now. Yeah. I mean, but but I two things I want and then I want to take a group picture. It's almost seven. I think your meetings are seven. I want to keep y'all all like, ready to go get the spring break, right? Wherever y'all go. <laughs> um, I don't like to keep people on. You know, I, I keep meetings as, as as I can because I need y'all to go out there and and, and work. Um, is uh, I need a picture of all of us so no one moves until we get a group picture. I know because you know we don't post it on social media. It doesn't happen. <laughs> We all have Twitter, we all have Facebook, we all have. <laughs> and, um, and I forgot what the other thing was going to be. I don't know, I forgot. Why sure. would we hear crazy better? We're just crazy better. How about we just end it with we are Democrats, we are Democrats, right? We're and we are crazy better now than we were four years ago. <laughs> well, four so, years ago, we had charges a million people died. But not, under, not under our life. Not under our life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Come on. What are you? Are you hiding in the corner? No, I came in when they were speaking. Come on. I know I said. I didn't see you. <laughs>